I'm going to try to explain this uh, pulley system that I have here for my rudder. You can see the larger white pulley on the right hand side. Um, that basically takes the cable and prevents it from rubbing underneath the seat. Now the cable comes through the seat in the front which I'll show in a minute and when it gets to this point it goes around the pulley and it has to run uphill. So that's why this pulley is here. The other thing with the cable is, um, as the cable comes from this side here, it, it comes in at an angle toward that white pulley this way. And as we know, the cables have to run in and out of pulleys straight. So I had to put this pulley on the cable to straighten the cable out this way before it goes into the white pulley. And I'll try to get a better angle of that if I can here. It's dark in here. I don't know how well this is going to show it. So this dark brown pulley here, it takes the cable that runs at an angle this cable here runs at an angle this way. It has to come through and go around this brown pulley to straighten the cable out so it will be a straight shot into the white pulley, if that makes sense. So I have two pulleys here close to one another because the cable needs to change directions twice. And then since when the cable comes out of the white pulley, it runs uphill. So the brown pulley has to be at an angle. It's not parallel to the, to the plane or to the floor. It's at an angle, which you can kind of see there. You can see how that brown pulley is angled in relation to the cable. It's parallel to the cable, but it's angled so that it will guide the cable into that white pulley. And you can see that the white pulley guides it up underneath the seat. So that's what I had done. And then I had spaced the brown pulley in a way so that the plywood here basically acts as the uh, cable guard so that the cable can't come out. It can't come out and around the pulley. And of course it's epoxied in. It's epoxied here and here. And I've got some plywood in here to space it off of this plywood. And I've got a piece of plywood on here for the screw to go through to, to reinforce the spruce a little bit. So that's my, uh, my brief pulley uh, speech. Here's another, another angle. This one is a lot better. You can see how the cable comes in at an angle. And then this pulley, this brown pulley here, straightens the cable out so it will run into this pulley. And another thing that I wanted to show is, maybe I should show it from a, somewhere else, because this is dark, but underneath the white pulley is my uh, cable guard, if you want to call it that, cable guide. That's nothing more than a hexagon-shaped plastic standoff that I ran a screw through. And I've got those um, on these white pulleys up here by the seat. And I've got them back here as well now. And I've got some still pictures of these as well, but you can, now it gets blurry. But those are little plastic standoffs that I just ran some wood screws through and they work just fine. And you can see as well that I, I now have my gussets on both sides, here and here, and then on this end and on that end down there. So this is pretty much ready to go, except for the hardware. I've got to change out the hardware when I do the final installation. Oh, what else? Oh, and then of course, probably the biggest achievement is that I have my rudder bar in. You can see here with my swaged on cable fittings. and the support brace going back to the seat. And that's all straight from the plans for the most part. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. 
okay? And then I've got some uh, hard tubing that runs from that up to my rudder pedals. Now something that I decided to do, and I really don't know why um, they're shown the way they are on the plans, but I just took my tubing and used a, a tubing bender and bent the shape. And rather than having this come up and cut it at a 45 degree angle and this piece cut at a 45 and welded them together, I just made it out of one solid piece and bent it. Now granted, this I went with stainless steel tubing for all of this, for these pedals, for this tube, and for all of my rudder bar stuff. Just because um, I don't think this is going to see a lot of stress and, and wear and tear really, so I was... I'm very confident using the stainless, but it was very easy to take this tubing. Uh, this is 3 8 tubing as opposed to half inch, and as I just said it's stainless, 35 wall. Bent it in a tubing bender, and then welded, welded this little flat piece of stainless onto the side of it. And it worked out well. It's all in. The little brackets on the bottom, again, those are stainless pieces bent at a 90 degree angle. And then I've got my uh, flathead socket, socket head screws, flatheads for the uh, for the uh, mounting. And those are stainless as well. So that's it. My rudder system is now in. And the cables are in. And the uh, elevator is all hooked up except for the push-pull tubes. Alright, moving on. I'm just starting to lay out the control horns and the uh, control cables. What I'm doing here is I'm using string to replicate or to simulate uh, the actual control cables. This is just like, uh, like kite string, it's nothing fancy. And what I'm trying to figure out is I'm trying to figure out where to locate the horn on the elevator so that this angle that the uh, control cables run in, that angle will not interfere with anything on the fuselage. And what I found out is if, uh, if I move the horn, even if I take the horn and move it over onto this side, of this uh, cap strip, it will move these lines just enough over this way that they would interfere. Let me see if I can do this. They'll interfere with this upright right here on the fuselage and they'll actually rub a little bit on this cross piece here, this angled piece. So <clears throat> for me, I wanted to keep them as close as I could to the center line of the fuselage because the further out you go this way, the more cable you need to run and uh, the cables themselves stick out further from the fuselage itself in this region. So this is about the best place to put it. Um, I've got it right up against this piece of cap strip and the cables can run down and uh, into the fuselage and when I move the elevator by hand, I can move this up and down by hand and watch the movement of the cables. Nothing rubs and nothing binds. The other thing that I need to do is I need to adjust this angle this way of the control horn so that it is, let me see if I can get this better, so that the control horn itself is in line with the string. It's sort of the same thing that I had done for the uh, turnbuckles these brackets here. You want this to come down in a straight line with the bracket. It's the same idea here. You want the control horn and the uh, control cable in a line. You don't, you don't want the horn this way and then the control cable comes off of it that way. So that's kind of what I'm working on now. Of course this space here is going to be for my eighth inch plywood and I'll probably put another piece of sixteenth inch plywood on this side for the bolt to go through. And uh, then, of course, some plywood in here as well on either side for these bolt holes. So that's the method that I'm going to use initially, just with some string to check alignments and check to make sure that the uh, 
the so-called cables won't uh, rub on the fuselage. Here you see the bell crank assembly and I just got the turn buckles hanging off of it temporarily. Those are actually going to come off but I just wanted to make sure that they would fit on here the way that I wanted them to. My plan is to uh, have this, alright there goes one now, have this uh, bell crank vertical or as close to vertical as I can get it and then with that in the vertical I've got my elevator, at least one of them for now. I don't have the other elevator completely built yet, but with these wood supports that you see here, I've got my elevator temporarily held up in a flight position and it is as close to parallel to the uh, horizontal stabilizer as I can get it. So if I can come in here, here is the, uh, the end of the horizontal and then here is the end of the elevator and I want that to be a nice center line, a straight line down the center. I don't want the elevator up or down, I want it straight with the horizontal. And I've already checked the fuselage, the fuselage is level. Um, it's, it's hard to put a level on the horizontal because this leading edge is a different height than this main beam which is a different height than this cross brace which is a different height to this edge. Uh, that's what gives it the airfoil shape so you cannot simply lay a straight edge across the entire width because the, uh, the widths of the wood give it the airfoil shape. So any discrepancies um, in flight can be trimmed out using the cables but that's not of concern right now. I just want to make sure that the bell crank on the fuselage is vertical, the fuselage is level, and that uh, this is a nice straight piece, a straight uh, line through here. And now all I have to do is simply make up the cables to go from the elevator uh, fitting, the elevator horn, down to that bell crank. And again, with the bell crank vertical and everything here lined up the way it's supposed to be lined up, I should be able to make the cables for this horn. And then, in theory, that should allow me full travel up and the same amount of travel down with everything kind of neutralized the way I have it here. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to start making up cables for this elevator. Here is the elevator horn temporarily installed. I chose not to put plywood in here just because I found out it's not so important with the screw heads but underneath where the nuts go. If I were to put plywood there and then put the horn on and then put the nut on it would actually have the nut up above this piece here and you, you would see that through the fabric. I don't know how critical it is being underneath you'd probably never see it but I didn't like it so I'm not going to put plywood there. Um, I probably could put some plywood up on top but I probably won't just because the these ears, the space between this top ear and this bottom ear is so close it fits this bare piece of wood really nice. If I were to put plywood on either side I'd have to try to open up these uh, these ears to make that wider to fit. So I may not more than likely I'm not going to worry about plywood here. I think there's enough meat of spruce around the bolt that it's safe plus it's epoxy to this piece here. It's kind of reinforced with this piece here being epoxied and I don't think there's a lot of actual torque here. I think the torque is actually transmitted to this here and this is nice and solid. I've got my uh, plywood here. I had to make it pretty heavy because I made this arm a little too short but I'm okay with that. Try to get this in focus. So I got this uh, this piece of plywood, that's a, actually it's a couple pieces of eighth inch plywood epoxied here. 
I got a 16th inch piece epoxied here and then of course the bolt so this is just temporary so I can start running my cables but there it is I've got my cables made for the rudder you can see here I got the swaged fitting on the cable and I've got it attached to the rudder horn the cables come back and they go around these two pulleys on this beam that I had made now the beam is epoxied in place but I still need to make gussets to go on here on this side and down on that end on this side and on the other side here but for now it's just here uh, temporarily so to speak cables come around these pulleys and then they come down I know it gets confusing to look at they come down around this pulley contraption that I have made and I'll explain this a little bit more in detail later they go underneath the pilot seat through a hole you can ignore that square hole that's a mistake please ignore it and they come on up to my turnbuckles and my rudder bar now what I'm doing now, I have my, uh, my control stick torque tube, which is the green tube, in place temporarily and I'm just using that as an alignment tool to help me center the pivot point of the rudder bar. And I've got the two red weights in place to help hold the rudder bar in place. And what I'm doing now is I'm basically just uh, actuating the rudder bar back and forth checking for smoothness for binding and what I want to do is I want to run it to its full travel until the rudder itself bottoms or hits the uh, elevators in the back and about the time that it hits the elevator I want full travel here as well and ultimately I'll use this upright here as my stop now what I can do with this the way that this is uh, set up right now I can move the rudder bar forward or backward to get the bar itself to hit onto this just as the rudder in the back is hitting its full its full throw that's the beagle he's barking at somebody you can ignore him too um, and then of course when I put tension on the cables it will draw this back a little bit and prevent the rudder from hitting so that's kind of where I'm at I'm just kind of swinging this around trying to figure out where it should be located as far as the stops go and as far as the rudder goes with hitting the elevators in the back and then I can shift this back and forth depending on how I need to do it make sure that it's square and in alignment with this then I can mark the holes I can mark these mounting holes that are underneath here for both sides. All right, let me uh, continue on here with uh, with these cables and this rudder bar, and I'll come back.